Murasaki Baby sounds like a song that was written in Japan in like the 60s mm. that it, like Beyonce or somebody's bringing back. It's like, oh yeah, Murasaki Baby. That's that's definitely that a hit track. Didn't, didn't not Sinatra so lay that off? track down? Not so far <laughs> off. Uh, uh, Akira Yamaoka actually does do the soundtrack for it. It has nothing to do with Asian people. So if if you're going to play the game, you're like, I love Japanese things. It says Murasaki Baby has nothing to do with them. So, um, but you played it. But I played it <laughs> because I was tricked in that way. I was like, oh man, this I is think I was some, tricked too. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be like some fun weeaboo game. It, it wasn't. It was uh, a totally different experience. I would say. It was still a very pleasant one. Okay, so it was fun. It, it just was wasn't fun. the type of fun you were expecting. Uh, it's very, it's very artsy, very surreal. Do you do you remember a thing called Salad Fingers? I know it's it's a weird thing to bring up, but it was a, uh, um, you know, it was just like this creepy little thing. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's is it a kitchen, really a, is it a kitchen utensil no, we're talking it's, about, it's or like, just a, like a really a horror film, or like a yeah, children's it's, it's cartoon? Kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like horror surreal. Um, so, I mean, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, it's, it's really strange. I probably shouldn't have brought that up because there's no way to explain it. Um, if, I, if, if I was, like, stuck in a hallway and I had Edward Scissorhands coming one way and Salad Fingers coming from the other, I'd choose to take on Salad Fingers. You probably wouldn't, though, because he would creep you out. He'd freak you out. And it's a freaky game, and that's what Murasaki is about. It's, uh, it's, it definitely utilizes the Vita. Like, this is one of those, hey, look at all of the capabilities that the Vita has. Um, it's entirely touchscreen. So front touchscreen, back touchpad, that's pretty much the only things you use. Mm -hmm. Essentially what you do is you navigate this freaky little thing, this freaky little girl, where her eyes are right here, and she wears a little bow, and she's, like, kind of cute. And she opens her mouth, which is on the top of her head. <laughs> so her face is just, like, twisted. Um, and that was kind of freaky. And what you do is, is you give her this balloon, and this balloon is her lifeline. And you navigate her through these different environments that are, um, I guess, linked to the, the background. And what you do is you switch the background with the touchpad behind it, and it has different effects. The effect, the platforming element of the forward environment. Well, that's a lot <laughs> to say. Yeah, it's really... It's, you did it. We got through it. Yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, and it's really... It's really interesting. I wasn't expecting to beat the game. It's really, oh, it's a really short game. I think I played for maybe like two hours and beat it. Okay. But um, how much is it? Uh, I believe it's a uh, fourteen ninety nine on right. Vita. So it's you know just about the quick to download, quick to get through. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you really like using the Vita sort of like touchscreen elements, I would say it's definitely an interesting play. It's super surreal. It's kind of funny. It's it's a funny, quirky game. There's there's a, a little kid that looks like Bob Ross. That and the whole story behind that one segment is that he is being chased by this pig that eats him, but he doesn't swallow him, just eats him, and now he's stuck in this pig, and that's the story. And uh, the way that you you navigate through is the little girl is scared of the pig, so you switch to this environment where it's just like a bunch of TVs, and uh, when you tap it it starts the effect, and so the pig turns around and looks at the TV, and so you can go past them, and it's like little things like that. You know, there's a one where it like freezes the environment, there's one where it like fills up the balloon, um, there's one that like scares these kids, um, and there's another really interesting one where it's, you turn it on and then you can flip the actual Vita, so it uses a gyroscope, oh, cool. and you go upside down, and after a little while, you know, it's, you don't even know what side is right on the Vita because you're just like trying to navigate through and and there's a lot of like different timing effects where you have to switch environments in the middle of another action. Um, hmm. And I thought that that was a really interesting use of the Could Vita. Could you experiment? Like was, was all the interactions that you had with the different backgrounds and foregrounds, was that purely to solve puzzles or did you ever come across any funny little Easter eggs or jokes or things that they put in there that I would you could have, experiment with? I would say like the story itself is a joke. You know, there's no, there, it's there's nothing like super serious about it. You know, the girl is trying to find her mother, and you are trying to navigate her to find, you know, uh, the final destination of where she could possibly be. And but there's these different characters of each stage, like I was talking about the little pig guy, and each of their stories plays through the whole level and has and is affected by the uh, the little backgrounds 
that you get. And in each like round of levels, you probably get like three or four different effects. Um, so that's pretty much just the full puzzle solving element. Um, but in terms of like Easter eggs, I wouldn't necessarily say there is any. There's no experimenting. It's you just use it to navigate through the levels. Could this have been longer than two hours, or do you think they just kind of hit the maximum of, of how long they could stretch out this new function? I think I think that's it because after a while, it's really frustrating because the touchpads are are great. It's a novel concept, but they don't work with that much finesse. So there are times where it's like you have to do this, so you click the background and then you switch to another one and you have to freeze a thing and like smash through it or you have to like bounce off and turn the electricity on and things like that. And so that requires about four or five different physical movements. And so you're pushing and pulling and, and, and like swiping around and at, at a certain point I was just like frustrated <laughs> with how it just it wouldn't work well. You know, you would like slide across and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't and then you would just fall to your doom. So um, I would say that it just, after that length of time, you're just over it. And I think they picked a really good amount of time to really show the functions of the Vita. So you were happy when you were done. Did you, what, did the ending just kind of like happen? You're like, oh, that's it. Or did you kind of sense like 20 minutes out, like I think I'm getting close to the ending. Let me, let me just wrap this up. It, it's really hard to know because there are individual stories. So, you know, I was kind of like enjoying seeing what they're, they were about. Um, and then it just sort of ended and I was like, okay, I guess that's, that's good. Well, there was a one stage before it where it's like you meet, you meet all the characters again and they're like telling you how grateful they are. And, um, that, that's when I was like, oh, it's the end, but it's very abrupt, I would say. Uh, and and I, would, I also think that it was predictable. I, I predictable. called it that's predictable. That's not, from what you described so far, it would seem to be the opposite of predictable. The ending was predictable or the game became the ending, predictable? No, oh, okay. the ending is predictable. The game is unpredictable <laughs> because it's, it's just a whole bunch of like weird zany stuff. I, I guess uh, a good example is um, Foster's imaginary friends, you know how mm -hmm. they're all like really wacky? Yeah. Do you remember a character named Cheese? No. Well, he's like this big yellow doofy looking dude and he is pretty much every character in that game. <laughs> and it's a little disturbing because there's these, there's these little like elements where it's these people inside apartment buildings and they throw teeth and you have to dodge the teeth. You have to like use the umbrella and like drag her along. Oh, that's another mechanic. It's like a giant escort mission because the way that you move her is by you hold her hand. So you have to oh, have okay. your finger on the uh, screen at all times. So it's, there's a lot of different mechanics. So you have, a very, you have a very yeah. dirty Vita right now. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> covered in just my oils and fingerprints. Yeah. You, you <laughs> have been playing a lot of weird games lately. I, I enjoy them. I love weird <laughs> games. The weirder they are, the better it is for me. I think it's like a grand experience. Uh, yeah, and that was definitely a really weird game. And I surprisingly, even though even though it wasn't Asian weird, I still enjoyed it. Even <laughs> even though they deceived me. So I forgive them. I forgive them. I'm and proud of you, man. Thank you for making that sacrifice. Hopefully the next one will be Asian weird and we can get the yeah. report on that as well. I hope so too. Thanks, man.